Today we're hiking along this trail uh, a ways, maybe about a mile or so, or maybe less, and then relocating over to Canadice Lake and see if there's a little water in a stream there and walk up maybe to where the waterfall is. Did everybody have a, a like a picnic lunch or no? Okay, if you don't, well, when we're done with this, uh, probably around 12:31 ish, we'd be heading back up through. Hemlock to okay. get over to Canada okay. so we could pick up something. Yeah, you okay. Can tell me. All right. Um, All right. Then uh, and then we can make a picnic lunch wherever. Okay. And so then we could go. Uh, I was thinking we'd, we'd probably be ending around three. Is that good mm -hmm. time for everybody? Yeah. Now one thing I like to do when I'm walking along is get a sense of how diverse is an ecosystem, meaning how many different things do grow in there. And when you just look around you here, do you get a sense that there's a lot of diversity in the trees? Yeah, uh, around here they probably two broods because they arrive early enough in the spring, like in March, they're building nests, uh, some of them in April yep. and fledging their birds in May okay. and then having another brood and that would explain why one of the birds that continues singing the longest is the robin. What is the explanation for why the shadow is so big around the foot but the, the creature themselves has no big foot? Under a scope um, you could see that the feet have all these hairs that stick out and they're hydrophobic so that even when you pull it out of the water there's no water on them. The water does not stick to the hairs. The hairs avoid water. Now when they rest on the water with all those hairs, the ten it will not go through the water because the surface of tension won't go through all those hairs. But it does create a little pressure on the surface of the water so the water is depressed like this. So the light coming through is hitting a curved surface like a lens and it's getting refracted so that instead of going straight down to the bottom, it creates a shadow. And so notice, right around it. yeah, and you notice the shadow has a bright <laughs> ring around yeah, it? That's yeah. because it's focusing the light of the sun a little bit around the edge of the lens. Like a halo. Like a halo. Looking under the log, right where the log comes down to the ground, mm. there's a frog mm. sitting so quietly. I was afraid if you pointed too much. Oh, there's another one, right in the bottom of the pond. Look, oh, yeah. you see where the biggest one? Look, there's a frog. Amazing how they camouflage, even though they're quite oh, green. Yeah. Uh, rocks here, so watch your footing. Yes, there were settlements along here when the city eventually purchased them and destroyed them all. There was a hotel here. Oh. Uh, I think we can even walk down and see a, a spot where that was. Several people pointed out that there's some plants here that don't, aren't usually growing in the wild around here. One is this shiny, darkly thing, myrtle. And then we have all these day lilies. And we even have lily of the valley, but it's not the wild one that occurs in this area. It's an ornamental one. And so, it's quite a big area of it. And we may even find some other things that aren't native over there. Here we have a, a very good example then of an area that was probably cultivated as a garden. Look at all the lily of valley up there. Yeah. Wow. And I believe this was the site of the hotel, a hotel that was here. And as far as I know, this property was uh, acquired by the city around uh, 1870 or 80 or so, like that. I may be off by a little bit. So, and then the buildings were torn down, taken away. So what we have now 
over a hundred years later and we still have a profound influence of former human use of this land. That these, these plants are still surviving quite well here and cover, they're the dominant understory right in here, even though it's more than a hundred years after that was taken out. So uh, humans do have a long lasting effect with their activities on, on property. And even though you can stand at the end of Hemlock Lake and look down it from the dam and just say, wow, this is how it must have looked before humans came here. Partly it, it is, but once you get a closer look, it hasn't recovered its native state and may never, because if nobody actually comes and rip these out, these guys will probably always be here, as well as some plants along the trail that were invasive that we saw. So one of the great things though, is that there are chunks of shoreline on both Canadice Lake and Hemlock Lake that have been protected for so long that the forest on them look probably very similar to what they were originally before humans started cutting trees or uh, planting things.